I'd like to take this time to answer a question that appeared on the Web Yeshiva blog. In fact, uh, the question has already been answered by other bloggers, and uh, the answers on the Web Yeshiva blog are good answers. Nevertheless, I'd like to add a point. The question was, if somebody uh, asks, they want to light candles Friday night, but they can't light candles until long after Shabbos actually comes in. So what's the uh, proper thing to do? So I'll tell you a story. It happened to me when I was in Moscow. In Moscow, the yeshiva in Moscow used to have Shabbos, used to make Shabbos and made Shabbos available to anybody in Moscow who wanted to come. Of course, uh, people came at odd hours and Shabbos, you know, moved. It was earlier sometimes, later sometimes. But uh, we never said anything about how you got there, when you got there, where you were going. I mean, it was, uh, in those days, I mean, people's only connection, people, young people in Moscow had the connection to Judaism and Shabbos through the web yeshiva, through the yeshiva in Moscow, I'm sorry. And um, then somebody came and told me uh, that she wanted, say, 10 o'clock at night, and it was long after Shabbos had begun. And she wanted a bench licht on Shabbos. She saw other people doing it, and she felt uh, strongly attracted to the uh, minhag, but she could not find a way to do it at the proper time. She was a doctor, and she worked in the hospital until late. And after that, she came to the yeshiva to participate in the Shabbos and learning a little bit about parashat the Shavuot, etc., so she said to me, what should she do? She wants to light the Shabbos candles, but she can't do it until long after Shabbos begun. And one could argue that her connection to Judaism was through lighting the Shabbos candles. She wanted to develop spiritually. And in fact, uh, she was being Michal Shabbos anyway. I mean, everything she did was... Uh, non halachic she didn't know anything about the halacha. So I told her this. I said, you have to understand that I can't possibly give her permission to light the Shabbos candles after Shabbos comes in, because on Shabbos we're not allowed uh, to light a fire. And lighting the Shabbos candles would certainly be uh, unacceptable. So I can't agree that you should do that. I certainly can't agree that you should do that when you come to the yeshiva in Moscow to participate in the Shabbat here. But then I told her, I said, look, I will be happy to be your shaliach, me personally. I'll be your shaliach, and I'll light Shabbos candles on your behalf here in the yeshiva at the proper time. And then someday when things change, and the schedules change, you'll be able to light Shabbos candles on your own. I think that this answer found a lot of favor in her eyes. And I, light, I lit Shabbos candles for her during the winter when the days were very short. And by the middle of the summer, when the days were very long, she would be able to come on her own and light the Shabbos candles in the proper time. Uh, eventually, uh, she came uh, to Israel, the story, of course, otherwise I wouldn't tell it, but the story has a happy ending, which day she's from, married, living in Yerushalayim. Thank God. I think it's important to know that you can't evaluate the benefit of unnecessary leniency, but you know that certain things cannot be compromised. And you can imagine that if you do it in a way that might find favor in the eyes of heaven, it's also true that it will probably find favor in the eyes of men and women.